Today on WRFI Community Radio News, we're joined by Gina Bush, who's a longtime community activist in Ithaca and a member of the Sean Greenwood Working Group. Gina Bush, thank you so much for speaking with us on WRFI Community Radio News. Great to be with you. Gino, how, how long have you been in Ithaca, and, and what's been the work that you've been involved in for our community during the past few years? I know it's, it, you've been working very hard. I've been here since 1980, and the things that I've been involved with recently here is, is the Sean Greenwood Working Group <clears throat> to bring about um, what we've really been working on is to make people aware of how the police operate and and to make sure that they have a knowledge enough to know when when they they can file a complaint against police department if there's a police officer disrespects them or they feel they haven't been treated right and we've had workshops and teachings and teachings and we've uh, developed a uh, uh, sort of little booklet that says know your rights when you get stopped by the police. We don't want people to uh, disrespect police, but we want people to know what their rights are. And so I wanted to talk today about the uh, issue that's been uh, in the in the local media a little bit recently, and, and it's been uh, ramping up. It's the issue that um, they, w- they want to expand the jail in Ithaca. It would it will cost nine hundred thousand dollars for this first part of the renovation, and um, the supporters of jail expansion say that they need to do it in order to prevent the cost of boarding out inmates to other counties, which is about two hundred forty thousand dollars a year. And uh, and I guess I, I first want to uh, understand from your perspective what do you think are the main arguments that have been used to justify the expansion of the jail in Ithaca and what's wrong with those arguments? Well, actually, I don't think there's actually uh, uh, any argument that is is uh, concrete or has any validity in terms of, of expanding the jail. Because, you know what? They're going to continue boarding out anyway. That's not going to stop because the population in the jail is increasing every day. So how they, how they, how are they going to stop um, boarding out? I mean, what they are doing, they're taking the recreation room that they have there in the jail, and they're talking about putting seven more beds in the, in there. Well, guess what? Them beds are going to be filled before you know it. And then what? They're not going to have room enough for everybody. So the boarding out is going to continue. So that's an invalid argument to me. That doesn't mean nothing. This isn't the first time that this jail expansion issue has come up in Tompkins County. Do you, um, can you talk a little bit about the history of the jail expansion issue in Tompkins County? And uh, I'm thinking about what happened in 1998 when... Uh, they were looking at expanding it even more and uh, how that was blocked. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know too much about that, that issue. Okay. But I can remember when, when in this county, Tompkins County Jail was downtown and there was hardly anybody in the jail. Matter of fact, I was in there one time and I was the only one in the cell block. I mean, that's how few people were going, were getting arrested. Now all of a sudden you have this explosion of arrests. Um, not saying they are, are all valid, but arrests of people for things that really uh, don't have any validity to them. I mean, you, you know, I mean, more people, are, especially young African Americans and Latinos, are getting stopped and frisked for nothing. Um, people are always getting disrespected. And I'm not saying that, that this city is totally void of um, crime. There is crime in this community. But there's a lot of um, misconception about 
who should be arrested and who shouldn't. And then also in the in the Thomas County Jail, you know, in these outlying regions, um, little towns, um, these judges are sending guys to jail, men and women, youth and older people to jail for nothing. And then they take the bail money and keep it. Don't even want to give it back to, uh, say, for instance, OAR, phenomenal organization. Yeah, OAR. I wanted to talk about OAR. In 2012, this is according to the Ithaca Times, that in 2012 they helped 69 individuals make bail so they could return to the community. OAR estimates that it saved the community over $400,000 last year in keeping those 69 people out. The average time that they would have been waiting in jail to appear in court is about 65 days. So do you think that a large number of the people who are in the jail or being boarded out need to be there if there are so many who are only there because they can't make bail? No, you know what? A majority of those people that are in the, in the county jail are there on misdemeanor charges. And just think, if that $400,000 that OER helped save the county was given to OER, just think what that would mean in terms of helping people out. I mean, OER struggles every year to meet its budget and is unstaffed. And I know because I'm on, on the board of directors there, and it's really a shame that that type of money couldn't be used for alternative programs in this community to help keep people out of jail instead of putting them in, especially on these misdemeanor charges. And uh, from your perspective, how have you seen um, arrest policies leading to people spending more time in jail for low-level offenses? Uh, have you seen that? Well. The thing is, you know, if you get arrested for a misdemeanor charge, you can be let out in your own recognizance. You don't have to have a bail. You can be let out in your own recognizance, which means you have to return to court at a certain date. If you don't, then you probably will be locked up for avoiding coming back to court to face your charge. I mean, there's people that are getting arrested for public intoxication. And and um, just minor things, riding a bike on the commons, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, violations, which shouldn't be at all. People that um, just minor things that they don't need to be arrested for. And these judges, not only in the city court, but in the outlying areas. They could let these people out in their own recognizance. And if you do not come back to court, you will be held accountable. You know? But the majority of guys, men and women in the county jail, are, are there for, like, petty stuff. Shoplifting. Maybe a mother went in there and she didn't have enough food for her kids. And she was trying to get some food for her kids. Stuff like that. And that's, they don't even that's take, the, take that self into account. That's the center of the the issue of criminality. Uh, really, it's it's uh, the state of poverty and inequality in this town is actually, um, you know, contrary to what people might believe if they're you know sitting in their ivory tower. But there are a lot of people who who are just trying to get by. And um, when you have that situation, um, you know, you, crime comes with it. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you uh, agree with that? Absolutely. You know, when you have poor people that are struggling to make ends meet, what's going to happen? You're going to have, you're going to have crime and increasing in crime. You're going to have an increase in drug addiction, alcoholism, all these things. So who's out there trying to help people not to get into those positions, not not to become a drug addict, not to become an alcoholic? You know, it's not a lot of people out there that, that are helping people. It's always after the fact. Oh, after you become an alcoholic, okay, now you need to go to alcoholism counsel. After you become a drug addict, okay, we need to send you to some sort of drug treatment program. 
This is all afterwards. But where's the preventative programs? There ain't none. Well, a circle of recovery, we do have a preventative program in the community that, that we are, you know, anybody's welcome to come to our program. We don't, we don't discriminate against anyone, but <clears throat> we're just trying to keep people out of that mix, that drug mix and alcohol. Yeah, and that, and that goes to uh, another issue that's, that's affecting us. Um, uh, m- you know, mental illness is, is criminalized. And, oh, my God. Um, right. a, you know, addiction is a mental illness, and that is criminalized as well. And um, so maybe you can talk about the work that, that, that you've done with Circle of Recovery and, um, you know, I guess thinking about that as a, a a model for a way that we could be treating some of these problems in our society. Well, the circle of recovery is, is uh, initially years ago when, when we started the program in 1997, it was for African-American males who were already addicted to drugs. And I and the purpose of the program was to start a program because um, to help guys who were already addicted to stay clean. But now we're realizing that we need to be more proactive in terms of helping people. And we, our door is no longer just for African-American men. It's for any man that wants to come. We don't care what color he is, what his ethnicity is. Any man is welcome to come. But we want to even help guys that are just maybe at the doorstep of addiction. We want to help them not to get into that addiction. And so that that's what we really are working towards. And so far, we're doing okay with that. You know, helping guys not to get in, into the addiction process where they lose everything, their families, their children. Once you get out there on that crack, you're all done. Forget about it. You wind up with nothing. And you wind up in jail or you wind up dead or in prison. And where does where does racism come into all of this? You know, when they expand the jail with more beds, you can bet that unless something drastic happens, those beds will likely be filled by black people. And, you know, it's very well documented that people of color are more likely to be arrested and they're given harsher sentences by the criminal justice system, even in a place like Ithaca that likes to think of itself as a enlightened place with a lot of, you know, smart, well-to-do people. Um, Maybe you can talk about the current state of racism in our community with respect to policing and the the jail expansion issue we've been talking about. Well, you know, racism is is here and it doesn't look like it's going to leave um, anytime soon. And it's even in the police department. I mean, look what has happened to some police officers of color that work in the police department, the stuff that they have, they have to put up with. But uh, as far as racism in the community, yeah, I mean, who's the first one to get targeted? I mean, if you, I, I can't tell you how many calls I get on the weekend from young people that have gotten stopped late at night just walking, you know, maybe going home, coming from a party and got stopped by the police, you know, and got harassed, you know. And luckily, they didn't get blocked up. But anyway, I mean, I get calls all the time. And why is that? But yet and still, you can go maybe two blocks the other way, and there might be a... uh, It happens all the time. I mean, I see a bunch of college kids walking down the street, they throwing bottles on people's lawns, beer cans everywhere, talking loud, being disruptive. Guess what? The cop rolls right past them like it doesn't matter. So see, there's, there's that privilege aspect to it. The people that they think that have privilege that go to Cornell or Ithaca College, you know, come from privileged families, they get a pass. But the poor people, 
that live in this community, they don't get a pass. They don't get a pass. And they might not be doing anything other than just walking home. Sure, they might be talking loud and this and that, but that's no reason to stop and harass these people. You know, I don't see it. Gino, what do you think is the path forward here? What are the alternatives that we could focus on right now and the the actions that need to be taken so that we don't need to be putting more people in jail and expanding the size of those incarceration facilities and instead focusing on things that actually add value to our community and enrich people's lives? Well, we we need more alternatives to jail. Like programs like OAR, they have a wealth of programs up there that can help people, you know? And there's other programs in the community that can help people. We need, or if they ain't, people need to start some programs, start being proactive. Like the Circle of Recovery, we just made up our minds that we're going to do something. We're going to try to change the situation in the community. People got to start being more proactive. And I tell you another thing, jobs. J-O-B's, jobs for African Americans and Latinos and other people of color. They got to stop discriminating against black people, Latinos, and other people of color. As soon as they see a black man or woman coming in the door for a job, that sign goes up automatically in their head, oh, 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 here we go. And then if you tell them, oh, you... You try to be honest with them and tell them, look, I have been to prison, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing good now. I'm trying to get a job to support my family. That's another X against you. They want to cross you off the list right away. So jobs, and I don't know if we ever get a, we'll ever get a, rid of uh, just, um, the racism. I mean, people just can't. We'll never stop being able not to see a person for who they really are because the first thing we see is the color of their skin, not the content of their heart. So that's going to be hard to overcome. But there are some people, I've been working with the hospital the last seven years, and we've made some tremendous strides in terms of hiring people of color, and I'm so grateful to them for giving me that opportunity to work with them. And the program we got going up there has been real good. Excellent. Excellent. So. Uh, Gino, thank you so much for speaking with us. Is there anything else you'd like to add um, speaking about the the jail issue or the, um, you know, the issues of of poverty and inequality and and criminality in in our community here in Ithaca? Yeah, well, I don't. I know this show's not going to be on till six o'clock. But if you do have a chance, come to the county legislator legislature tonight. At actually, the meeting starts at five thirty. With a, allegedly, are going to be taking a vote on this budget issue. But if you can't make it, you need to find out how you can get involved with us or some other group to stop this jail expansion because it's not going to be over it ain't over till it's over till the fat lady sings right (laughs) right chris yeah uh and so if people aren't sure how they can uh, get involved um where do you think is the best place for them to 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 start oh they can uh contact me if they want to and um my email is address is e bush no Ken to George e bush eleven at twcny dot rr dot com. Just email me and let me know you're interested, and I definitely will get back in touch with you. Okay, Gino Bush, thank you so much for speaking with us on WRFI Community Radio News. Gino Bush is a longtime community activist in Ithaca and a member of the Sean Greenwood Working Group. Gino, thank you for coming on the show. Okay, thank you for having me.